All right, here's something of beauty. This was a Jewish person. Just talking. And about a little life which had been snuffed out by the Germans, but I mean this applies to all human beings and how they would never see this little girl that was a little girl jumping at her gymnastics or swimming in a swimming pool or bringing mummy home a bouquet of flowers, all that stuff. Well, Arabs have children too, you know. I'm not a Muslim. I'm a Christian. I love God through Christ. I'm absolutely clear. I must love my fellow man, but not their faith. So, as far as Muslims or Hindus or non-believers or atheists or what agnostics or atheists or whomever they may be, Sikhs or Jains or Buddhists or anyone, I don't know, whatever they are, that's their affair and they must get on with it. That's their affair. I wish they would come to Christ, indeed, but I'm not going to try and ram it down their throats. This is what the so-called Christians have done throughout the centuries. It is one of the biggest turn-offs for Christian faith in, that exists. You just look at the history of the so-called Christians and much of it is murder and mayhem. Anyway, just to think, you see, if you come, this is on the radio, so the radio is wonderful because you don't have to, you know, you use your imagination, and the image conjured up was of this little girl whose life was snuffed out by the Germans, but it could be any little life. But what I have, anyway, just right, little girl snuffed out, Germans, little girl, just think of all the joys that w would never happen because that one little life was snuffed out, snuffed out. Well, this applies to all life. The difficulty what I have with is when little lives are taken away by God through no fault of their own. Particularly, I emote about this little child we christened Luke after Matthew, Mark, Luke. Luke was the healer, the physician in the Gospels and I found him in Africa at a town called Middleburg and he was AIDS and he had a body the size of a six month year old but I mean he was two we found his birth papers eventually okay, and he had no language they locked him away in a cupboard and trying to get rid of him but someone must have obviously fed him and so on and he just went ma ma well that's one life you see now that little child had no choice the child doesn't have a choice obviously brought into the world and should be then loved and nurtured and cared for and so on that wasn't me tucking the child away, that was saying you grow up to be big and strong and then you love God, hopefully. But live your own life. My parents are just custodians, guardians. They don't own their children. We belong to you, my lord, okay? That's where I stand on that question. So I, I can't answer that. I'm not God. Okay, but that one, I, I am stumped. I have nothing to say to someone who's lost a child. Where is God? Indeed, well, he is still there. My human answer is, well, if I were God, I'd ban all babies dying, but you know, whatever. But that's what we try and achieve, obviously. There's health programs and all sorts. The figures are still probably a bit like this. Every one second, a child, two children are born in the world, and every two seconds, one child dies in the world somewhere. Now, I actually only heard those figures in the 80s, 1980s, so the ratio may be slightly different, and the figures are bigger, obviously. I do my best. I love you, my lord.